time now for Coming In Hot with Brent Wallace and former Ottawa Senators Jason York. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Coming In Hot. Brent Wallace alongside Jason York. Uh, Yorkie, I've managed to do it on the uh, final day of the regular season i have tracked down <laughs> your boy work oh, is going to join us it feels like christmas morning and uh, we just had R- rourke on off camera before i didn't mention to him but uh, i wonder if he knows how much we've been chatting about him throughout throughout the year on the pod it's uh it's been i'm a big fan of the underdog wally because as you know i was a, i was a seventh round draft pick so i love I love the guys that grind it out and have to battle for every for everything they get. So I'm 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 excited for this. It's going to be uh, one of my favorite episodes. All right, perfect. Here, before we start, I just want to help you out when you because I don't want you to say his name wrong. I have. <laughs> just, just, listen, you, you know what? You know what the problem was? I thought Rourke for some reason was French, so I kept trying to get, get a little accent in there. So I was like, "Church." <laughs> Yeah. So I I got it down now though. Are you sure? Because if not, I put up we have uh <laughs> here we go. It is do you want to say it now before he comes on? Well, let me let me give it a crap. Rourke shark tree. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't get it. I get you know what he's gonna listen. You may not now, you may not. I've said I've, I've said his name enough on the show. We should have it right, but I don't uh, care. I haven't had a problem with it, but anyway, yeah, all right, before we bring it. him on, let's take care of some quick business and then yeah. uh, we'll get to work. I'm sure he's, he's got a big playoff game coming up tomorrow. All right. Um, right. Here, right. here we go. This show probably presented by uh, Betway. Uh, bet your way with Betway. Must be 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Also, uh, registration now open in the NHL bracket, nhl.com slash bracket for the Betway playoff brackets. Uh, you can go check that out. And by BEI, Bonisher Excavating Inc. Uh, equipment rentals, aggregate topsoil sales, custom crushing and screening, uh, haulage and floating, custom uh, concrete formwork. They are heavy civil general contractors. They do residential and commercial, uh, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. BEI, 613-432-1120. And also our uh, good friend, Douglas Mattress. Uh, if you want a great night's sleep, well, you got to get a Douglas Mattress. It's named Canada's best mattress on Canadian living, unrivaled comfort. Uh, feel and it's got that motion isolation sleeps cool and relieves those nasty pressure points loved by more than 200,000 Canadians and over 10,000 five-star reviews you can order it very easily online usually takes about one to four days to get your Douglas delivered right to your doorstep Uh, don't forget about every mattress comes with that free comfort sleep bundle pillow sheets and a mattress protector Uh, don't wait Start your 365 night sleep trial by visiting douglas.ca slash C-I-H. Wally, I am on my game today. Well, I know you probably didn't sleep a whole lot last night, knowing that we oh, have, without oh, further ado. So fired up. Here he is. Uh, Rook Shark, Jay. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Listen, Rook, uh, be honest. Be honest. Have you, have you, have you ever listened to our show before? I gotta be honest. Uh, people have told me, but I, I don't have Twitter or anything, so I don't see too much. I think you guys tagged me in something on uh, Instagram. I saw, and I kind of watched a few clips, but uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not super familiar. I, like I said, I'm off off most social media, so it's. Uh, yeah. I don't Let's see a go. ton. We've been we've been pumping your tires all year, man. I. Like I said before, yeah, when I was, I, I love how you grinded it out through your career and. You know, you're, you're, you're 96 born. So I know how much it takes the resilience and sticking with it. And I, I just think you're a great story, man. And uh, love the way you play. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. So, uh, by the way, uh, happy birthday to work last week who celebrated uh, number 28 on the, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so work, there's a lot to get to uh, about your journey. I just, can you, uh, I guess summing it up would be really uh, odd, but can you sum up, I guess, the first little while of how your career went from going from World Juniors uh, into San Jose? Things seemingly are going well, uh, and then the injuries start to pile up. Yeah, I think uh, just frustrating. You know, uh, had a fairly decent junior career. We had lots of team success in Kelowna, and uh, 
yeah, I think uh, I was actually pretty healthy my whole first year pro right till the playoffs, and that's kind of when things kind of started up for me. So, yeah, it's just been it's been pretty frustrating with the amount of injuries and I guess adversity to deal with, but uh, there's been lots of good moments too. Uh, go ahead, York. Go ahead. I just want to say it starts with your first NHL goal. And actually, it's going to take me to our Wendy's Did You Know? Because um, I looked this up the other day, and I want to ask you about and uh, ended up with scoring in Ottawa at the same time. So um, is Wendy's Did You Know? is brought to you by Wendy's and the Daily Faceoff Survivor Pool. Uh, there we go. Uh, for those of you, uh, maybe we'll on a little afternoon snack, the Wendy's Pull Apart Coupons <laughs> are available to you uh, with a small coffee. Um you can win those weekly, by the way. So go to Wendy's Daily, uh, dailyfaceoff.com with the Wendy's Daily Faceoff Survivor Pool and get started today. Okay, Rourke, here we go. Uh, you scored your first NHL goal on October 28, 2018, uh, as a member of the Sharks. Um, it was against John Gibson and the Ducks. You would not uh, You would score your next NHL goal November 11, 2023 against the Calgary Flames, if I'm not mistaken. The goals were 1,840 days apart or five years apart. Does that sound about right? Yeah, no, that sounds right for sure. So that picture of you with Dominic Kubalik, who assisted on that goal, uh, which we have the video of, can you take me through what that means to you? Yeah, I think uh, probably one of the rare cases where I think my, my second goal means uh, you know a lot more to me than my, uh, my first NHL goal and probably what I'll remember more. But yeah. Uh, the goal itself, I mean, Kubi made a great, Drake made a great play steal from the guy. And, I mean, Kubi put on a platter for me back door. So it was a bit of a tap. And... Um, Rourke, you got some sneaky skill. And I always tell those people this all the time. Everybody that's in the NHL is usually the best player that was on their team in junior or college. But guys that can find a way to play in the league, they figure out what they need to do. It seems... Jacques kind of like I was watching how Jacques was playing you this year and it seemed he was liking the way you were playing and you were starting to get some more ice time under Jacques but you just seemed to be a guy that you you figured out to play in this league you got to be on the right side of the puck you're good on draws and just was it tough adapting because I look at your your stats in junior you put up some good numbers and then you get to the NHL you, you got kind of got to change how you play don't you Yeah I think uh well especially for me, miss, missing the time I did. Those are kind of those crucial years. Uh, myself starting this year at 27 years of age, I knew I wasn't coming in and, <laughs> you know, getting all that opportunity to be a power play guy and this and that. And, you know, maybe had I stayed healthy at the start of my career, you know, when you're, you're coming up as a prospect, you get a little bit more, you know, luck or a little bit of this mm-hmm. and that where you kind of, you can build yourself into one of those roles. But no, I, I knew that. And I knew, you know, uh, if you want to play the fourth, fourth, maybe third line, you got to be dependable. And I think, you know, those are things I always had in my game, you know, the defense and and stuff like that and penalty killing. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not, like I said, I didn't think I was going to come in and I wasn't going to make that team, you know, scoring goals or this or that. So I just tried to really focus on, you know, being dependable and, and uh, what I could do with, like I said, the, I know it's going to be limited ice time there. This guy's making a lot more money than me who are, who are counting on to score the big goals. But, I mean, you need you need guys to fill a ton of roles. And, yeah, I think at my age, uh, I kind of realized that. And, like I said, just tried to play that role to the best of my ability because I knew that was my best chance of getting in. Were you, uh, were you at that practice when Jacques did the line change practicing? I'm not sure. I was hurt when he first took over, so I met. I I actually didn't play for Jock till uh, when it was January in there, and I think he took over. The, I got hurt in Dallas there, and he uh, yeah. took over after there was one more game, and then he, he took over. So I missed uh, quite a few of the practices at the start, but um, I'm not. I don't. I don't recall. I think you got the memo that Jock loves short shifts because I was watching your shift length. And if you want to, if you want to put yourself in Jacques' good good books, those thirty second shifts you're taking, you're putting yourself in. Uh, I can tell you from experience, he loves the guys that keep it around thirty five and under. Yeah, no, I think uh, that's important too. Obviously, I, I'm not trying to stay out there and get extended and get caught uh, in a position where you're tired. And especially, I think. 
be in third, fourth line, you got to play with a ton of energy and uh, bring bring that side of it. And I don't think you can do that, you know, if you're out there for too long. So I think uh, short shifts were, were definitely important. Uh, I just want to go back to uh, early on. I read somewhere, and I apologize, I think it's Ian Mendes in The Athletic, talked about you weren't sure of – if you were going to continue your hockey career or not, like how close did it get for you to go? Maybe it's time to shut this down. Uh, I, I don't think it got that close to that. Like probably from someone on the outside looking in, I think people probably thought I was just done to be honest. But yeah. I think in my head, I just, I just needed time. And I think it was two full years, obviously with COVID by the time I played a game there. So I, I don't think that was ever the plan for me, but I kind of just, took it with a day-by-day -day approach but in my head I don't think I ever really thought you know this is done so and you know had those thoughts been going I, I think once once those creep in it's it's it's, time. it's almost impossible to come back but I like I said from probably just about everybody's point of view uh, on the outside looking in probably thought I was done but yeah not really not really in my head and like I said that's just what kept me going so or how Oh, just, I just want to follow that up with one thing. How yeah. emotional was taking to the ice for your next NHL yeah. game? Yeah, it was It was a few years. So I came back and uh, uh, what was it in Toronto there? It didn't go real well for me just in this COVID short stint with Toronto, but uh, it was only 20 games or whatever. And then got signed a PTO in Belleville and played a year there and I had some bad luck. I think I broke my hand a few times and – uh, obviously got came last year, got six games and yeah, no, I was, I was over like the moon to get back in the NHL and said, so just meant a lot just to get back out there. Cause I, like I said, there was, it was two years without playing, playing a game of hockey, let alone playing in the NHL again. Uh, so I was obviously super excited with my, uh, my six games last year. Uh, when I got the call to come back up, I was, I was pretty pumped and I'm, I think I broke my, I guess I broke my wrist last year in that sixth game so that was kind of bad luck then but that that was a pretty big moment for sure when i got called up and started last year yeah it, it it's pretty crazy the, the kind of luck you're having you had all those concussions you have to sit out the entire 2018-19 season like that's like that must be a strange feeling not playing hockey for the entire season then coming back and trying to get your timing back get your feel back and all those things and then not long after it's the COVID comes like how, how many, like, like you just had such a string of bad luck. It's just, it's a testament. You're able to stick with it. And, you know, here you are playing the NHL. I know you're down in Belva right now, but it's, it's been, it's been a pretty successful season for you this year. Yeah, no, I think like I said, lots of a different adversity along the way, not just obviously with the concussion troubles I had, but I mean, I've, broken my hand multiple times in the last few years and I had an MCL and this and that, but, you know, kind of at this point when I get, when, when I get hurt, I feel like I get, I have all the confidence, you know, that I am going to be able to come back because I've done it a few, a few times, unfortunately, but yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely some bad luck along the way. How'd you, how'd you break your hand a couple of times? Would you, how'd you do it? Just hitting with a puck slash? Uh, mostly, uh, shots or shot block or friendly fire from the point, but yeah, no, just like I said, bad luck. <laughs> oh man. Crazy. I just, I, the time you spent in uh, San Jose, I guess, how instrumental were Joe Thornton and Brent Burns on your beard? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I grow it as good back then. And I actually had a pretty good one. I think when I scored my first goal, there's some pictures, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, they were. We had a lot of characters on that team, and just guys who played for you know for so long, and guys that are still playing, and you know playing so well, and they've been around, and they they'd won, and yeah, it was pretty special when I first came in. The amount of guys I can say I got to play with, and you know just be around and be on the same team as, but yeah, no, it was a, it was a special group over there. So you had you had the stash going for a while, just the stash look. Now you got the full beard. So, so is this going to be the permanent look, or are you, are you going to change it up again? Uh, I don't know. I, sometimes I just get lazy. Unfortunately, it grows pretty quick. Uh, but I mix in the mustache every once in a while. I usually partake in uh, Movember, get a pretty good one going. But then, 
<laughs> Usually just one day I'll decide to get rid of it. But uh, See, I think maybe we're in a bit of a tight playoff race. we got three games here in Belleville yeah. to get in and then hopefully go on a bit of a run. So probably probably keep it around for the, for the next bit for sure. So you had me fooled because of the last name Cherche. And when you had just the mustache, I'm like, he's, he's got to have some French in him because he's kind of like the French look, right? The stash, clean shaven everywhere else. So absolutely no French in your in your bloodline, though. No, yeah, I know. It's uh, it's always disappointing. I think when I got called up uh, at the start of last year, the French media right away came flying over in the room. And <laughs> they thought they'd have have a new voice to talk to. I had to tell them I don't. I, I never even took a French lesson in elementary school. <laughs> so it's a tough name for for them. I think that, like I said, they get a little excited. But yeah, unfortunately, not not a word. <laughs> uh, do, do you? Uh, this is, leads me into a next question. Do you have a nickname on the team? Yeah, uh, like just uh, charts. Okay. So we refer to you a lot as Rourke Dog, and I'm yes. curious if you own a dog. I do not. My parents own a dog, so we can, we can say I own one through them. But no, not one personally. <laughs> okay. It'd be great if you had, because it seems yeah. fitting to call you Rourke Dog. By the way. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, by the way, you just brought up Belleville, which you have a game tomorrow night uh, against Syracuse, and then you play two key ones. Well, I guess they're all key at the moment uh, against Laval. Uh, you currently sit in the last playoff spot. I believe you're two points up, if I'm not. Yeah. I guess what's the mood around this team right now in Belleville as you guys are trying to uh, lock this down? Yeah, I think uh, guys are pretty positive. We uh, obviously, with the uh, auto ending tonight, we got a few more guys, I think, back. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've just been down here the last few games. So, I think we won four in a row. And, obviously, we got drummed a little bit our last game out. But, uh, no, we uh, we set ourselves in a pretty good spot in the last week. And it's kind of in our hands. Hopefully, we can get that big win Wednesday. I think the math is we just got to get one of the two against Laval. And, and we're in. I'm not 100% on the math with all yep. the tiebreakers. But, uh no, I think it's a it's an exciting time of year, and we kind of, I mean, you'd like to be in a couple of weeks ago, but uh, if you're going to get in, you gotta you gotta win 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 your way in. I think, if, and if we don't, we probably don't deserve to be there. So I, I think we'll get her done uh, for sure. But like I said, it'll it'll be an exciting week. But it's a, I think the guys are just excited and like I said, ready to take care of business. Well, I was gonna say it's always more exciting when it comes down to the final couple of games. Not for not necessarily for the players, but the fans love it. Yeah, exactly. No, I've been in in, in this uh, few few years where it's right down to the last game, and like I said, I, I prefer the years when you're in uh, in about a couple weeks before, but <laughs> we might as well make things a little interesting. Uh, so I just got a question in the chat, and this isn't uh, from Alfie's Mullen. He just says, "Can you ask what the main difference between DJ and Jacques were during your time?" Um. Yeah, I I don't know if so much for a main difference. Like for me specifically, I think DJ was honestly a big reason I, I re-signed and reason I started the year there. So he's been really good to me my whole career. I actually had him back at under 18s uh, when I was when I was after my first year uh, junior there. So he he was obviously instrumental for for me. I think he's a fan of me. And then obviously when Jock came in and I was unfortunately hurt. For the start, I'm sure he knew not much about me, and I think the the assistants that are still there, you know, uh, were good to me. And uh, then once I got to play for Jock, I really enjoyed playing for him too. And honestly, for a guy like me in my position, not much changes, coach from coach, right? Like it's uh, your role. Your role really doesn't change. You know, I know when I'm going to get out there and PK and what what I have to do. So. I, I don't think, and I think throughout my career, I've had to felt too much of a change, coach to coach. But uh, yeah, that's probably not not the greatest answer. Sorry, but uh. <laughs> hey, it, I mean it's so true though your style. But I, we also thought uh, when Jacques took over uh, that he you would be a perfect Jacques player because of you're just no nonsense, uh, get the job done, and just take care of business basically. So that's a Jacques player through and through. Yeah, no, and I think uh, from my conversations with Jock, he uh, he trusted me and uh, and utilized me, and so I think, uh, like I said, I, I like playing for him a lot, and like I said, it was 
He was good to me. Did he try to speak French to you? No, no. I, <laughs> he, he got the report. I wasn't French. <laughs> uh, Thomas Shabbat and you uh, played World Juniors together. I was just, did he reach out to you early on when you signed with Ottawa? Uh, not that I remember. Um, <laughs> but I, <laughs> yeah, you run into my camp. It's always funny. I mean, you, you don't get too close with guys, World Juniors. You, you kind of get the, you know, a preview of everyone and, you see him, and it's been, I don't even know what, seven, seven, eight years since I'd, I'd seen him last. So, um, no, but like I said, it's all it's always cool, though, when you run into guys that you played with at these tournaments or, or that where you have a bit of a relationship before, and then you get to see them more and then see see how they've changed, you know, as a person and as a player. Hey, Rourke, what is the CHL Sportsman of the Year? I saw that in your bio. You won, you won that when you're with Kelowna. Yeah. Um, I don't know the exact criteria. Probably kind of like the sportsman, most sportsman like. I don't know what all it's goes in. The good into guy it. award. The good the, guy. The good so you guys, want. Good guy. The honest guy. I don't, I'm not sure what the criteria was. <laughs> I just saw that. I'm like, CHL Sportsman of the Year 2014. 2000. We put up a lot of goals that year. And well, obviously... he had 18 pims and 48 goals, so 82 points. Um, it's there like the go. Lady Bing. I didn't know they had that. Yeah, no. yeah. I'm not like I said. I'm not 100 percent sure what the criteria was, but <laughs> cool to get uh, selected for something. So uh, the touchy subject is your, uh, I believe UFA at the end of the year. Have there been any discussions? Are you hoping that you can re-sign with Ottawa? Uh, not much discussions. Yeah, I. Like I said, I'm sure they're waiting to see how the whole year plays yeah. out for everybody. And yeah. uh, I've been in this position the last few years. I'm not, like I said, I don't take anything personal or this or that. So, yeah, obviously they got they're, they're, I'm sure there's going to be some big changes here, and they'll they'll regroup and I'll regroup after the season and see what happens. But I don't I don't really have a plan for next year. I'm more worried about Syracuse, I guess, on Wednesday. Yeah. I, haven't, I, haven't really, <laughs> I haven't really haven't really thought too much about a, a plan yet so i'll just like i said see how see how this year finishes out and see see what they say and kind of go from there great attitude can control what you can control and all you can do is hey got a got a game tomorrow let's get ready yeah exactly yeah uh so what does rourke dog like to do in the summer uh i've been golfing a lot the last couple of years uh, like with the injuries and stuff, there wasn't always so much opportunity to get out golfing and whatnot, but get out golfing a lot. There's a couple of nice lakes in Saskatchewan. I get up to my, uh, cousin's got a cabin at one place. So we're up there most weekends and it's a nice place in the summer. I, I don't know if I can spend my winters there, but yeah, a lot of golf and spend time with friends and family. Do you, okay. So what would be your, uh, hockey foursome if you had to pick four three other players to play with. Are we going all players all time? No, like I'd prefer that like, you can say Gretzky, but he seems like he's always on everybody's list. I want might you to not be my, it might not be. I, you you, I you can pick any three any, guys, any, anyone he wants. Yeah, that's tough. I don't know. Um, <laughs> or are you taking, you taking Joe Thornton? Obviously I would take the, Brent Burns. Would you? I don't think he golfs though. He's Doesn't too busy matter. He'd be, an He's in that... He'd be pure, pure entertainment value. Like Rourke, what's the deal with Brent Burns and that Winnebago he gets in and drives around all summer and goes to different locations? Like, did you hear that I think story? It's Mercedes. It's... I've seen it. No, no, he he takes a huge uh, thing he lives in in the summer and just goes to a area and finds a group of pros to skate with and lives out of his. It's an RV. He RVs. Yeah, I. He had a few different things going on. Like, uh, <laughs> he might be the most interesting man I've ever played with for sure. And I think, if I'm not wrong, I think his thousand games was when I was there with him. And then, like, I feel like we got him like a megalodon tooth and like a bunch of different things. Like, <laughs> but he had that big ranch. Just, I, I'm sure he still has it in Texas. He just got me. I used to talk to him about. He had a bunch of different animals. Like exotics and stuff and it's all fenced in and no he had way some cool, he had some cool stuff going on but yeah he uh 
Yeah, most probably the most interesting human being I played with, but he he was great. He was good to me. So, I said, what, I, Rick, what was in that backpack? He'd always wheel into the rink. He had that his backpack with just packed with stuff. Did you ever anybody know what's in that thing? I still don't know to this day. Honestly, <laughs> he had that big yeah, the big camo pack, and <laughs> yeah, he, he was a pro. Was pro like he's always up in the gym. He's always working on something. Always. Yeah. He was tracking all his, you know, he had, he's wearing different, different heart rates than guys and stuff. So he was, he was all, always on top of stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few of those things, but yeah, he was, yeah. it's no surprise. He's still playing and, you know, still such a big contributing factor of their team over there in Carolina, the way he would take care of himself. It's crazy. Hey, what, hey, totally. what 30, 39 now, Wally? Something like that. I can't it's, remember. It's I just remember. Um, I didn't mean for this to be a Brent Burns discussion, but just since you guys brought up the <laughs> thousandth game, he, the ceremony was against Ottawa. I totally forgot. He was given uh, a silver stick, a bottle of wine, a fossilized megalodon tooth, and two antelope for his ranch. <laughs> Normally, it's like a <laughs> yeah, boat, a it. motorcycle. <laughs> oh. So, were you part of those conversations? Like, hey, we need to get him some kind of animal for the ranch. No, I'm pretty sure I was a 22 year old rookie who spoke when spoken to. So yeah, I, didn't, I didn't get too many words in, but I, I could, the boys did a good job and took care of them, obviously. But yeah, like I said, it's a little different than than, than the Rolex or uh, yeah. or whatnot. But so uh, Carl just got to think. Yeah, but oh, no, man. it was good. And like I said, it just goes to goes to show how how many of his different interests off the ice. But like I said, a real cool guy. Yeah. He is certainly. Um, Rook, I don't want to keep you. I know you've got uh, stuff to do and prepare for tomorrow's game. Uh, we wish you good luck this uh, week, or I guess this week. Uh, and uh, we appreciate you just stopping by. It's uh, You've been a big part of conversation here a lot of times when uh, Yorkie gets going. So thank you well, for taking the time. It's been that. Uh, thanks, Rook. It's, you're, you're, like I said, you've been a great story. It's, 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 it's been a tough year for the Sens, but uh, you know, your story, I think, is a very positive one. And it's a uh, testament to your career. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Like I said, I, I appreciate all the tire pumping throughout the year. I know. I, like I said, I didn't see it first time. Maybe I'll have to get Twitter or something, maybe a burner account. But like I said, from what, other, from what other people have told me. So, no, I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on. Right on. Good luck in the playoffs. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. There goes Rorschach. Uh, I'm glad. He, now, York, yeah, I feel like the year is complete now that you've had a chance I, to talk to Yeah, him. it's been good. It's been good. Um, Great beard game, by the way. Right? He's got, he's kind of got that, uh, he's got that Yukon Cornelius thing going on, you know. From, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to throw that one at him because he'd have no idea who Yukon Cornelius is. The old miner, the old miner oh. from the Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer cartoon. You know, maybe we'll get it. Uh, maybe I'll get it. Maybe I'll get a side by side with Yukon <laughs> and and Rourke. And, uh, Can you ever uh, reference anything within like the last ten years? I okay. How many times do I have to tell you? Cable television stinks now. It's good for watching sports, and that's pretty well it. Otherwise, you're watching, you're streaming, whatever Netflix, Crave. Okay, you're watching. Uh, you know. By the way, is. I just started a new one, and people in the chat, please help me out here. Uh, the Americans on Crave, uh, six seasons. Uh, it's got Carrie Russell, and I can't remember the. Uh, Listen, pretty good from what I've seen. I, I got something for you to watch right now. You'd probably like this because it's kind of dark. And the main character kind of reminds me a little bit of you. It's called Ripley. Very, very creepy. You should w watch that. You'll enjoy it. So I remind you of a creepy person. A little bit. A little creepy. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Just, just a touch. Just a touch. Okay. Um, let's get on to the sense chatter, shall we? Since uh, we let's, have let's. the final game 82 of the season. Um, before we do that, uh, by the way, the only reason I have so much more energy other than the fact I like uh, having guests on is AG1. It, it, I'm telling you right now, Yorkie, if you haven't done it, uh, well, I know you drink it in the morning. I notice huge the amount of energy I have in the afternoon with AG1. You do, eh? Yeah, I, I've been taking yeah. it. Feeling yeah. a little chipper. You know, I'm a granddad now, Papa Yorkie. Oh. I need, uh, <laughs> need the extra energy. There are oh. over... Yeah, like 90, uh, I think, different vitamins and supplements and stuff in there. So, yeah, you can use it. You need it. <laughs> I had a long walk with the baby today. Took a little walk over to oh? the coffee shop. 
got to get the uh, get the rays on the baby. So no, it's been nice. It's very cool. Uh, it's very it's very cool when your kid has a kid. It's a very you know how to describe it. It's like surreal. You don't believe it. Yeah, world comes out. Or life comes at you quick sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um. By the way, just back to, uh, as we move on, uh, AG1, uh, gone are the numerous daily vitamin pills. Just need one scoop of AG1. Uh, tested for 915 contaminants, and it's NFS certified for sports. So go to, uh, that's drinkag1.com slash CIH. Uh, proud to have them as a partner uh, with our show. Also, um, yeah, go ahead. No, I'll go finish, finish your thought. I was just going to move on to our uh, DoorDash uh Hot yeah. and cold, but I will wait. No, I just I just wanted to put a bow before you get to that on Rourke. Yeah, yeah. Because a, a lot of people, we we kind of just scammed, skimmed over some of the injuries and and what he went through, because it's always tough when you bring up concussions. Like I don't think a lot of people understand how many concussions this guy had. Like I'm, we're we're talking like at least four major ones where you miss an entire season. Uh, you, and it's you missed only two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's, yes. It's, it's uh, because those are very, very difficult to come back from because it's just, it's such a tough injury to diagnose. And to, when are you healthy? When are you feeling good? And you have that self doubt. And then you, know, you get nerves and stuff come into play, right? Because it's, it's your head and you yep. don't want to. But anyhow, I, I, it's it's a it's a very interesting story. Missing entire, almost like you said, almost two years, and then you finally get healthy. You've been with a couple teams, and then you uh, then COVID comes, and you and your and your your career kind of gets put on. Like that affected a lot of people, but especially a person in in uh, Rourke's situation, it's like you finally start getting going. Okay, now we're going to take another year and a half to to delay the process. So, like we'll see what happens. It's like 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 he just said, it's everything's up in the air. Um, but, but it's true pro though, like for a guy well, that's battled through all that true, like the way he plays the yeah. game is just an honest, true professional. Anyway, you know what it is? So skies, you'll see this a lot with players that have really good instincts of the game and you'll see them yes. in junior. They'll, they'll put up some numbers, but they're, they're still good defensive players. And I mentioned that CHL sportsman, the year awardy one, which was to play hockey at a high level and not take a lot of penalties is actually really tough to do. <laughs> so there's usually guys that are very smart are able to do that. And guys that are very smart are able to adapt and change. I'll give you a great example. Good friend of mine, former son, Sean Van Allen. Sean Van Allen was one of the most prolific goal scorers in the American Hockey League. Uh, one of the most talented guys. Wasn't the greatest of skaters as far as point A to point B. But he was so smart, got to the NHL, and he figured out, hey, if I want to stay here, I'm going to have to adapt my game. And Vanner had a great career of being a, a defensive uh, centerman. But because he was so smart, it made him that much better defensively. And yeah. I don't want to compare Vanner and Rourke, but I think Rourke is similar where you're smart enough to understand exactly what you need to do to try and survive. So... No, it's been a nice story, and we'll see uh, we'll see what happens to him after this year. But uh, good for him for uh, and like we said, we had. Uh, you know, I think I think if he did end up playing more than the forty some games, he probably would have won the Masterton this year for uh, or been the award recipient, the, reci the nominee. Yeah, yeah I agree yeah. with you. I uh, yeah. I think the what he's been able to do to battle back. Uh, yeah, is is huge. Nice just I can't imagine Yorkie just so. To play in the NHL is your dream, right? And the percentages of making to the NHL are so ridiculously small. Very to tough. go five years and battle through all that and score that goal, I just, yeah, I can't imagine what that feeling is like. Oh, probably feels pretty good. <laughs> I'll tell you like, that. <laughs> I mean, as he said, he goes, you know, it's it's all, it's bigger than scoring my first yeah, goal, and I, I agree, like for sure, for sure, uh, because just, it's just I love it's, those guys. It's so tough. It's it's it, when you're drafted. Well, even if you're not drafted, but when you're a fifth round draft pick, I call it chances or mulligans. You don't really get any mulligans versus if you're a first round pick, 
you, you're going to get about five to six plate appearances. And if you strike out a bunch of times, you're going to get keep getting opportunities where guys in these kind of situations, you, you, you have to make the most of your chances so they don't come around all the time. So that's, to me, that's why, like, we have fun with it, the work dog, all that stuff. But um, truthfully, I, I like it because it's a good story. And I like, yeah. I like when guys have to battle and, and uh, go through some adversity because you know, those, are, those are the good stories. So, uh, uh, yeah, there's lots of it. Like I covered S Sidney Crosby coming back from his concussion. Like, yeah, like that for him, like people thought it might be career ending. I just remember like what he went through and how he dealt with all that. Like for those guys. Crazy. Eh? Crosby's, was, Crosby's was crazy too. Cause that outdoor yeah. game hit, like it looked like, it looked like, hit. it looked like nothing, but when you're not ready, you're not braced for it. That's when it's the worst, yeah. right? Cause your, your body yeah. doesn't get into that protective instinct to protect yourself. So, uh, all right. I need, we need to move on. We got work to do. So, uh, yeah. I want to get to quickly the Ranger game. I don't know if we spent a lot of time on it. Cause I don't think the Sens spent a lot of time playing it. <laughs> so, um, we will it do that. As we it wasn't terrible. So, okay. Hang on. Uh, this show proudly delivered by DoorDash as we get to the hot and cold performer of the day, uh, get everything you need, even at the last minute, just, uh, download the DoorDash app and uh, get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app, enter code NATION25. That's 25% off up to a $10 value. Zero delivery fees in your first order. When you download the DoorDash app in the App Store, enter code NATION25. Offered valid in Canada, subject to change. Terms apply. So, Yorkie, mm -hmm. we're in the month of April. I know the games don't matter. The re in the sense of a 3-5 and five record, which isn't horrendously terrible. Mm -hmm. 491 minutes they've played. Ottawa has led for one minute. 60 seconds. Yeah, no, they've, That's they've wild had some, to me. And they've had some good comebacks. <laughs> They're uh, what's that stat? They're perfect in the shootout this year. I saw that one was thrown out there. I had no idea, but they're perfect uh, in the shootouts. There you go. There's something to be positive about. Well, I in fact, they I... won three games when, when leading by <laughs> 60 seconds is pretty yeah. good. But I just didn't think last night, like, and I'm concerned about tonight too. That, eh. What are you concerned uh, about? Let's just what, 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 what the be best, best case scenario is Montreal wins and Ottawa loses and they leapfrog them to go down and, yes. and, and be ahead of them as far as the draft odds. But still, they could still end up ahead of them depending on how the bingo balls or everything sorted out in the draft lottery, right? Like, what's yes. the most? Let's say Ottawa finishes six. Let's say they finish six worst. What's the most they can move up? You can move up all at the top 11. You can move up to number one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So that's why it's, maybe. it's why it's at 11 teams. Yeah. Like it's, listen, it's tough dissecting these games down the stretch and trying to I think, I'll, I'll tell you like the one thing, because I don't really look at plus minus that much. Do you know who's plus minus sticks out in a good way? And it's like, like, a, like, a. Like well, I was, was going to say Vladimir Tarasenko is going to win the plus minus award for the Ottawa Jake, Senators. But Jake Sanderson is a plus player. He's plus like, nine, if I'm not mistaken. It's right? crazy. Same with Ridley and, Gregg. I think Ridley Gregg's plus 10. But Sanderson's played most of the games and he yes. gets a lot of the hard Top matchups. Yeah. He gets a lot of the hard matchups. And you look at, I know we talk about him all the time, but I actually think he's gotten better this year watching him especially when he's carrying the puck, making plays, patience, holding on the pucks. Uh, he's gotten better, um, which I didn't think he, he could get to a higher level this year because of everything that's going on. But I actually think he has just watching his game as a whole. I think it's more well-rounded on the offensive side of things. But uh, so there's there's been some positives. Batherson's had a nice finish. Uh, yeah. Brady's got 37 goals. Which, by the way, I predicted. I said he'll get between thirty-five and forty. I think you said forty. I said between thirty-five and forty. So I better get a prize okay. for that. Well, I, uh, and uh, way to go on a limb there. Well, you guys didn't think you'd do it. Well, we were all predicting there was going to be six thirty-goal scorers on the team. No, oh, that's, that's tough. That's that's really tough to do it's, in the league. I'm just being facetious, especially when you're on a bad a bad team. But just but so you know, I just did the tankathon. By the way. On the second you, try, we got the first pick. Come on. So there, there you go. go. So yeah, like that. I don't know, like I said, these these last games, 
what are you going to do? It's you can go over them and, and and talk about them, but it's just it's such a different thing when you know you're out and the pressure of if we don't win, we're not going to make the playoffs is gone. It's 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 just t- it's a lot tougher to evaluate your players because you don't have that 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 pressure that you know that Detroit will have tonight, Washington will have tonight or the next few days. Pittsburgh still mathematically in it so these that's that's when you really see what you have um, right but what but i will is. say yorkie it's tough right now for this team to evaluate somewhat up front when you don't have stutzla and norris in yeah. your middle of your lineup and you're playing well, it's a great it's the, a great now the president's great trophy op- winners you're playing yeah. boston i know it, i know i understand that point but they still need a little bit of help when you're facing Boston and the Rangers. You don't want to be getting caved in every night. Yeah. Uh, look at the the Florida games. Like they've been shut out two of the last three games. Is that what it is yeah. with Florida and with last night against the Rangers? Like you can, they just doesn't. Mm-hmm. And Jacques said it last night. He goes, "Our first two goals, we Puck gave them to them. Yeah, uh, right. And then after that, the game wasn't that bad. But we gave up the first two goals, and this team can't come back from that right now." If you well, watch the if you trail. if you watch the best teams in the NHL, and I'm not, and I'm talking about teams like a Vegas or Boston, Florida, how they play, they manage the puck so much better than the Ottawa Senators do, and yep. that's Ottawa. Just whoever comes in to coach this team next year, right at the top of the list of things that should be addressed from day one. Puck management. It's a big thing Jock talked about the whole time he was here. And I do think it's improved because it was atrocious before. But puck management is key for this group of just, you just got to take what's given to you. And yes. I, watching that game last night, the, the the first, was it the first one, the turnover when Zub tried the little stick handle neutral zone and it got turned over? That, 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 that whole goal, that whole series is just caused from two decisions where you – you didn't make the easy play and then you turn it over at the blue line. And that's, that's been the Achilles heels, the Achilles heel of, uh, of Ottawa uh, for a long time now. And it needs to change. And, oh. and sorry, I was just going to bring up the shock quote. Like you've kind of alluded to it when he was asked about just his last home game. And I meant to bring this up a couple of shows ago, but he's like, I enjoy the opportunity to come back and hopefully help the team understand what it takes to be in the playoffs, how you need to play on a nightly basis help the players grow and maybe get better as an organization. I think we have some work to do, but I think we're in the right direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's right. Like he, that's what his whole job was to come in. And I think he's going to finish. If they can win tonight, does, I think it's 500. I think so. coaching record. Like were, yeah, that's right around there. That's, that's not bad, especially with the last few games of not having Tim Stutzla in your lineup. Like that's, that's a big hole. Yeah. In your lineup. And so, a lot of from experience, having played for Jacques for five seasons, he does a ton of teaching during practices. There's a lot of teaching going on. Like you can video is one thing, but even after you're watching video for 10 minutes as a team, a lot of guys tune out. They just do. And it's not, it's not getting through. You got to be on the ice. You got to be going through it. You got to be doing reps, going over your system, going over your forecheck, going over different scenarios. And then, it just becomes second habit. And they, they haven't had a ton of practice and they've just had a lot of ton of games uh, since Jacques has taken over. So um, yeah, but it's, I, I think he has instilled some things that will carry over into the next coaching or coach coach and staff who are going to be here. So that'll be the next fun thing. Wally, we're going to, we'll start, uh, we'll start uh, trying to pick who's going to be the next coach of this team. Well, okay. So uh, David K in the chat, just said Buffalo just fired their coach Don Granado today. Saw that. Does does yeah. that cause urgency for Ottawa to decide on their next coach? And here's the one caveat on this, yeah. and I know it happens occasionally, but the NHL doesn't like it during playoffs when you make announcements. No, and I don't but know I, if that'll keep them from, even if they wanted to right now. And I know there's coaches that still aren't fired, whatever, of yeah. making that announcement happen before the end of the playoffs. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Do you want to do it before the playoffs or do you want to wait and see what shakes down from the playoffs or what other yeah. coaches become available? Like maybe there's right. a guy maybe there's a guy you think, man, we like him, but there's never a chance we're gonna get him here because he's coaching there. Because you right. just it's that's the tough thing about this about this whole situation. So 
Um, I don't think yeah, we I, get a coach be, maybe so? prior to the draft. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a tough one. I, I, I think it's, I think it's sooner than that. I think they want to get that, that settled. That's just me. Well, uh, first round you'll see coaches uh, you'll like, okay. If Sheldon Kennett, Sheldon Keefe, sorry, is fired. Uh, that causes a ripple effect throughout the entire national hockey yeah. league. Cause it's arguably the most but, covered. But, head but, coaching but think, think about this. Do you think, do you think Ottawa's really going to care about upsetting the league after what the league did to them with some of the punishments yes. this year. Oh, okay. we're, we're really going to worry about your feelings when basically. Come on you, now, stop. You don't think so? No, no, no I, chance. I think I think so. Why you? So you think Michael Ann Lauer is going to try again to aggravate? No, and but end. if you have, I'm not going to say and, that. But if, there's there's no rule. There's no rule saying you can't hire a coach when you want to hire a coach it's not no it's just an unwritten rule that you so i will say like maybe the ottawa head coaching job isn't that big of a needle mover but the league does not like you to make big announcements during the playoffs to take any of the shine off of the playoffs that's a that's mm -hmm. hey it's part of the code if you will it's an unwritten rule in the national hockey league we'll see i th i think it's i i think they name the coach uh sooner than just before the draft well, what about John? I, I just we're, it's come up here in the chat a bit about John Cooper. Um, like, what if Tampa's out in the first round? Will it matter? Wow, yeah, there's a name to throw into the mix. <laughs> well, don't you remember Mendez came on the show and said, "Hey, John Cooper doesn't have a contract," and so we've all called. Him. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a lot of people say too. You'll hear this from people saying that. Well, Ottawa is a small market. It's Canadian city. You'll be it, it, it's going to be a it's going to be tough to let's say a John Cooper became available to get somebody like that to come in. I'm of the mind where I think coaches look around the league and they and they try to identify groups where there's talent. And what could I do if I got into a situation like that where you have a a base to work with? Like Ottawa is a lot better off than a lot of a lot of other teams around the league right now when you look at their their forward group. Yeah, sure. They got to address the goaltending situation. You need a right shot, the an older forward. But those are things that I, I think those things can be done this summer. Maybe not the goaltending, but the other two things I think for sure will be addressed. So for a team that's currently sitting uh, in a lottery pick, I don't know that they're that further ahead. Well, if you look at, I think if I think if you looked at most coaches. That we're looking. Let's let's just say let's just say a Berube for example. Yeah. If I'm and I'm Craig Berube and I'm this is just my opinion. Buffalo Sabers, Ottawa Senators. I got my pick. I think I'm I'm taking the Ottawa Senators. I look at that roster and I is there a Brady Kachuk on Buffalo? No. Is there a, a? I think Jake Sanderson is as good as a young defenseman in the league right now. There's just there's pieces there's pieces that would be very attractive for a coach to say, man, if I could get my hands on a Tim Stutzer, what I could do, because that kid's got some, he's got some tools. There's just, at the major positions for the Ottawa Senators, there's some really good tools. And coaches, especially coaches with egos, feel that they can be difference makers. That's why I think the Ottawa, that's why I think the Ottawa team is very attractive. Because don't forget, NHL coaches have huge egos. They do. They, and, and they love a challenge. And it's, I can get this team to the next level. Get me in there and we'll just like look at the Boston Bruins, for example. On paper, on paper, is that a really good team? Not really. But look what Jim Montgomery has done for that team. Like he's a outstanding coach. Yep. Like but who's there? Look at the geez, Yorkie. I Okay, one. I'm not, and I'm not saying. And I'm not saying. Yeah, there, there you go. Obviously, goaltending. And I'm not saying. I'm not comparing Ottawa to Boston right now. Two no. teams in totally different areas. But I'm just saying, the way coaches think. I get your point. Um, I just Ottawa's got some players that I just think are very attractive for people on the outside. Well, just look at the start of the season. How many people across the NHL looked at the Ottawa Senators and said? They're a playoff team. Yeah, I like. I it was there was a lot of people, and I'm not just talking about 
people inside this area that are biased. I'm talking about a lot of guys in the league. They were saying this is a playoff team. I like I like what they have. I like the I, I like Kachuk. I like stuff. I like their defense. Um, so I just I think I think I think that sometimes gets lost. Uh, all right, moving on to uh, we'll see how next season goes. We'll, but we have yeah, plenty yeah. of the off season to chat about this. Uh, our final lock of the day, which I don't give a shit about because I'm not even going to make 500. Uh, but it's brought to you by <laughs> Betway. Bet your way with Betway. Uh, go to betway.ca. Must be 19 plus. Please play responsibly. I can't believe. I Look at that so record. Well. What's wrong with what's wrong with you? I, well, you know, because I because I, don't I even wanted tr- I wanted I don't even to sense to victory. I don't even try at this, and I'm 31 and 22. I know, but like I should have taken the Rangers last night. That would, but I was like, damn it, there. With this team, you just never know. One time they're going to show up and do this. Come so, on. so I <laughs> I stuck my neck out. However, hey, how good how good is Shesterkin though? Because uh, I'm yeah. not the, the Rangers play really loose. Like when I talked earlier about the teams like the Vegas's and the Boston that play the right way, <laughs> New York doesn't play the right way. <laughs> Those guys are riverboat gamblers, but Shesterkin always bails them out. So. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah. To see. It's gonna be interesting who who, who they play and, and what happens. Uh, well, they're gonna yeah they're gonna get Detroit or Pittsburgh or Washington, right? So, um, I don't know. I don't think they'll have an issue in the first round. I hope but, they get the Island. I hope they get the Islanders. No, they clinched. They can't get the Islanders. Yeah, they're not gonna get the Islanders. Really it's lucky. it's they get the last playoff team to come in. So oh, that's a good I, hey, listen. By the way, Boston has to win tonight to. It, if they if they lose and Florida wins and Florida gets a division, then Florida plays Tampa in the first round, or Oof. and Boston would play Toronto. Um, so right now it would be Boston playing Tampa in the first round. Who do all our who do all our Leafs hating listeners want to see the Leafs play if we did a poll out there? That's oh, I would good. want Boston for sure. Would you? Oh I, yeah. I think Toronto can beat Boston. But I don't think they can beat Florida. Oh, I want, I would, I would love to see a Boston. I because you know what it's like. It reminds me of the Leafs, Sens oh, early two yeah. thousands when Kinda. they just couldn't figure it out. Yeah, I remember um, that. And it got in the heads. I remember, like I said to Radic, Ian Mendes and I, we always joke about this. We're like, I think it's Game Six in Toronto. We're like, if you win tonight, do you get to exercise the demons or whatever? He's like, demons? What demons? Well, the ones a few hours later that exercised their right and beat you again. That's what happened. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, anyway, I would, I would love to see a Boston Toronto series because I would, Boston would, I think they would roll over them. I, I, I just, I, I don't like Toronto defensively. I, I never have. And until they fix that, I don't get excited about Toronto. I think they're a, a very, of- listen, they're a very good hockey team, Yorkie. Let's not, I'm not saying Toronto. That. Yeah, I just think defensively, yeah. that's where the the issue is with that hockey team. I think there's pressure on Boston because of what happened last year in the playoffs, uh, losing in the first round like they did. I I, yeah. I I just I think Florida just seems to me like a much more confident, harder physically to play against. Like Florida's got some guys up front that punish you physically. Um, well. On Thursday, we'll get to our cup picks. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm not putting down. I don't think Florida is worse than Boston. I'm just saying, if I'm a fan, I want to yeah. see a Boston Toronto round one. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, yeah, uh, well, so it's it, it, it sets up perfectly because you get the two Florida teams playing. You get and Boston yeah. Toronto. It's just Which it's is, great. It's it's great theater. So is what Gary wants. Um, so, uh, what's your pick for tonight? By the way, Boston is nine zero and one in their last ten at home versus Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, David Pasternak is 27 <laughs> career games against Ottawa, 37 points. He's got a hat trick this year, I think it is, against Ottawa. However, Anton Forsberg, which I think would get the start tonight, yeah. is 3 0 so? 1 lifetime against the Boston Bruins. You think he gets the last start of this? Oh, because it was back. Well, if to they back, started right? Corpusella last night, wouldn't you? Isn't that how it's supposed to be? Uh, he's, he's went back to back before, but I. Uh, Boston needs to win this game to clinch, don't they? I yes. believe they do. So yes. Boston on home ice. Ottawa has not been great on the road this year. 
Um, I can't see Boston laying an egg, and they've got the goaltending to back it up. So I, I'm going to take Boston, hoping as well that Montreal beats Detroit, and then Ottawa leapfrogs Detroit backwards, takes a backwards step and slides into that uh, better draft. Yeah, hey, Arizona's it. Uh, I don't know if they anyway. Can you put There's the no, standings up for a quick sec, uh, yeah. Brett? Yeah, because I think uh, Arizona's ahead of Ottawa in the draft. Yeah, so Ottawa's at seven. Yeah, Montreal five. can still pass them. Yeah, yeah, it's one point. It's one point. Hey, how about how wait, how about Detroit coming back on Montreal? Oh my god! It looked like Detroit was dead, done for the year, and they come back and win it in overtime. How about Mason? Raymond? Unbelievable! What, what a player! But yeah. It still won't matter though if Washington wins tonight. That's it. That's all they got. Uh, they've got that yep. final seed. I still want to see Sid get in. He ain't getting in. I, I think. I think. I think Washington's I gonna. I think. I, I think they'll take care of business tonight. They're playing Philly, and I think they'll win that game. Uh, all right. Well, final game of the season. We will be back Thursday to, uh, I guess, dissect the first eighty-two plus our playoff picks. Yeah, uh, we we'll don't have, need uh, your Stanley Cup finalists, but we'll at least have to do f- round one. Yeah, yeah, and for all you poolsters out there, we'll have uh, some uh, guys you want to keep your eye on and and playoff picks. I'm doing my playoff pool on Friday. We do a snake draft, Wally. Ten players, fourteen guys. You take ten players in a snake draft. So basically, I'm going to have to identify Thursday night. Which I always try and load up on a couple teams who I think are going to make it to the finals. Okay, that's going to be tough this year. A lot, a lot of teams. A lot of teams are in the mix, uh, especially out west. Yeah, hundred percent. So, all right, uh, we will see you Thursday morning, nine a.m. Uh, I'll, I'll tell Yorkie seventeen times between now and Thursday morning. You got it. See you, everybody. See you guys. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>